Fanatics turn to And we're back. Game number two of our first best of three. Fanatic taking on Na'Vi. And Na'Vi, I mean, they look good in game one. No big surprise. They interplay today 1-0. and oh, And Fanatic sitting at 1-1, one and one, wanting to get things back on the right side of 500. But uh, we knew co going into game one that their, their draft wasn't necessarily bad. It was just Five very thin. Thin remaining. is the word I would use. They didn't have a lot of room for error. Didn't have a lot of room for mistakes. They had to play a very particular right. style and execute to the utmost Navi's perfection. And Navi, bad. unfortunately, just beat them in the execution department and hung a sub 30-minute loss on them as a result. Looking ahead to game two, the draft, Clockwork and Chen, Navi. Fanatic Happy to take clockwork away from Fnatic this time around and, of course, pair it with Puppy's Chin. Fnatic, though, they're going aggression, and they're also going strong laning with Lich and Bounty Hunter to break down the picks and, of course, all of the inside analysis throughout all of the D2L. Welcome in once again, Ben merlini Wu, And, I mean, Ben, it, game one kind of played out the way we knew it would. I mean, we talked about it during the draft. We, we laid out both scenarios. Either Fnatic would be, be able to surgically dismantle Na'Vi's approach to game one and not allow them to begin to roam the map and pick them apart, or Na'Vi, just their pure punching power in the mid-game, their pushing potential, as we saw them chew away at the towers of Fnatic once uh, we hit about that 15-minute mark. That would win out if Fnatic didn't execute, and sure enough, that's what happened. Yeah, it was very well executed by Na'Vi. It wasn't completely unpredictable. They pretty much executed Navi as expected, and that. Fnatic did too. I'm just more surprised that Fnatic didn't actually see it that whole like first 15 minutes of the game playing out that way yeah i don't like i guess i mean they even they got a kill on dendi they got farm up on honey and bottom lane like trixie got like some semblance of experience seconds. so it's not like things didn't go to plan for them it's it's just like Five they yeah seconds, they, it was very thin lineup as you said they didn't really have any disable or lockdowns to kill timbersaw or um or Dendi, and then they, did, they don't have the Navi heroes equipped to deal with the early game aggression from Chen either. Like, Lich not very good at dealing with it, um, and Wisp not good at dealing with it either. So I didn't, uh, I just don't see where they expected to get an advantage over Navi in that particular game. And their, um, ro their like global presence was just not as good either. Dendi just jumping, getting free kills, even though he got a little bit behind early because he was in a dual lane. So, I mean... Fnatic just has to rethink their lineup a little bit more. This is going to be, I mean, just based on the front four picks we see, this is likely to be a game that is determined one way or the other. No matter how long it takes to actually play out, I suspect it's going to be one of those games where the first 25 minutes or so we're going to look at it and say, well, that really told the tale, was the tale of the tape, as they say in boxing. When you have a bounty hunter up against the Chen and now Navi going to add a gyrocopter in, this front three out of Navi is a front three that can and really wants to fight early on. Clockwork wants to hit six and start hitting hooks. Chen, of course, we saw exactly what Puppy wants to do with that hero. He wants to roam early, then transition into a nice, stable, uh, tr um, uh, mobility-based kind of a lineup where you're just roaming the map, finding opportunities, and then every time you capitalize on one, take a tower as a result. Gyrocopter, an excellent late-game safety belt that nonetheless can give you a lot of magic Ten damage between Rocket remain. Barrage and Call Down in the early game. Then you put that up against Lich and Bounty Hunter. Now, Five Bounty seconds. Hunter, another hero who needs to be active early, has to contribute to his team in other ways than other heroes usually do. You Basically, you want track kills. No surprise there. Lich, an extremely strong laner, but as you said, against a lineup that's based around a Chen, a kind of an all-guns-forward kind of a lineup, kind of lackluster. So you have Lich, Lich, who has to get a lot done in the laning phase, has to really help at least one of the lanes win while getting to a six as quick as he can, paired with a bounty hunter who has to get work done early. And yeah, this is going to be a game that the entire complexion of which is going to be determined very, very early on. Navi will be very happy to pick up Chen again, too. Uh, just gives them the early game push that they need and they can protect they're very flexible too like chen uh started off bottom went uh, smoked around to mid and then went top and then got first blood and uh just staved off most of the aggression from mid um as well as top so it's just a very effective pick for them i'm surprised that fanatic ban out visage instead of chen but kuroki plays a pretty mean visage too so i can understand that and navi with timbersaw being banned out will immediately ban out the wisp like fanatic um they they use Wisp way more than any other team that I've seen um, in 6.79. And they use it usually pretty well, but Timbersaw is just way too good of a hero versus it. And Fnatic realizes that and uh, bans him out. And he dominated his lane too, so that's not an unexpected ban at all. Yeah, waiting to see what else they're going to pick up. Just going to throw this out there. Don't really think the probability of it is very high. But we have seen Dindy in the right situation run a mid-gyrocopter that would actually fit in fairly well with the lineup that Navi is showing us so far. Gyro as a mid-position hero. Can hold his own. He has nice harass from Flat Cannon. He has good re tends to have good rune control because Flat Cannon and Rocket Barrage allow him to shove the lane every time the two minutes approach. 
But uh, you put a gyro that, again, would build kind of a gank-oriented line or a gank-oriented sort of a build with a clockwork and shin on his team and then maybe put Havost on another hard-farming carry that can nonetheless come to fights. A specter would certainly give them that late-game potential plus the ability for her to reality in off of Haunt and uh, use that max spectral Five dagger build. Remaining. I've actually seen Navi run that uh, that exact composition before. So just throwing that out there is a possibility. Time. Don't know that that's going to be what it is. They'll probably just want to farm uh, Havost on the gyro and then give Dindy some sort of an active mid. Storm Spirit's still available. Queen of Pain, even though she's kind of fallen out of vogue, nonetheless a very popular hero. Uh, while I really favored hero by Dindy and one of his best. And uh, Fnatic, though, helping to shore up their ability to fight, picking up the Admiral Kunkka. Kunkka, of course, with uh, his ghost ship coming off cooldown every 60 seconds once he hits level 6. He's a great hero to try and deal with these push-heavy lineups just because no matter how hard you push, Kunkka is always ready to fight. A couple surprising bans for me is uh, Shadow Demon out so early. I didn't actually get a chance to watch the Navi Fnatic games yesterday, but Shadow Demon's just something that you don't see banned very often, and Fnatic still deciding to use Kunkka, um, even though that's banned out. And both of these, both of these teams also very highly prioritize uh, Life Stealer because they have amazing Life Stealer players on their team. Havost, uh, we just saw him wreak a lot of havoc with Life Stealer last game, and Arrow probably even better than Havost. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I think it's a good ban from Navi. Nyx Assassin, we haven't seen him too much. There's no like heavy casters that get shut down by him. Like Queen of Pain gets shut down pretty hard by Nyx Assassin. And uh, I guess it's Five seconds. somewhat useful against like X Torn Initiate, but it's. It's like a mediocre pick, I think, from Navi. Time. It's 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 not that great for his bounty hunter. He can find solo picks, like mm, I don't know, not even versus literally. If he has frost armor on, usually he won't be able to get a kill. Um, so I'm a little bit questioning the Nyx Assassin pick. Everything else looks pretty solid from both teams. Yeah, Magnus, I think a nice addition here, being able to empower Kunkka. Certainly going to help him with his carry potential even earlier on in the game. Will allow him to. Uh, hit for even more cleave damage early on, which is something you always want with him. And this could be a game where we see this Kunkka uh, build a battle fury. Even it's been a while since I've seen that. Shadow Blade tends to be the standard rush on a Kunkka following phase boots, then maybe a BKB or some other kind of survivability item after that. But Magnus giving them a nice way to counter initiate fights, a nice way to take fights, and certainly a nice way to set up some boats uh, for Kunkka. I, I feel like Fnatic's lineup is a lot more robust this game. This is the kind of lineup you want to draft against what Navi's showing you. They want to fight. They're going to have Chen's... Re you know, anytime you see a Chen, generally it's going to be... A, the term I always use is a guns forward line lineup. Or yes, you're going to move. Yes, you're going to look for picks and opportunities. But once you begin to push his five, you just kind of get everyone moving in one direction down a lane, get into position, spread out, and then look to initiate off of a clockwork, look to initiate off of some bad positioning, so on and so forth. And having that Magnus, it's so hard to push into a mag even early on, especially when you factor in the spamability of um, Tidebringer from, from Kunkka and Shockwave just to melt down early creep wave. So I really, really prefer Fnatic's draft this time to game one, and I think they're going to have a much better chance uh, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Na'Vi in between the 0 and 20-minute mark. And Navi actually has to be scared of the Ten big Magnus combo, too. That's always a looming threat when you're playing against a Magnus. Well, if we get torrented, we're going to get Chain Frost, no, torrented, Tidebringer, and pick. Ghost Shipped. And that's right. only four of the five heroes. And give up plenty of track kills. So they'll have that, like, in their head every time they're pushing. And they'll be, uh, like, attempting to split up because of that. They also have to split up because of Lich. I also like Fnatic's lineup a little bit more this game because they have more AoE. You need AoE versus Chen to kill mm -hmm. his creeps. And Lich ultimate just absolutely destroys but usually Chen would just like oh what's up all mech oh okay I'll just heal if my creeps get really really low and it didn't really do that much last game and when it bounces 10 times usually it just owns <laughs> yeah exactly I'll tell you what I really wouldn't mind here just as kind of a, a kind of a, a pocket pick for Fnatic how would how, what do you think of an ancient apparition and how that could fit in here? You're going to have the bounty able to do what he wants to do. Obviously, Mag's going to want mid. You're going to want to. I want to see a mid Rubik. Mid Rubik. Navi. Hey, there yeah. you go. I'm down with that. Um, this <laughs> still looking for that mid. We have. It's been a while since we've seen. When I say a while, I mean quite a while since we've seen Dindy on a mid Rubik. Still looking uh, to pick up. They're going to go ahead and grab the bat. So they're looking for the single target initiation, and that's actually a really nice pick from them. Uh, as you said, the the ability for them to put the whole picture together here off of a Magnus RP, uh, throw in the ghost ship, have the chain frost, and so on and so forth. This is a nice way to account for that. Just make Bat's number one priority, jumping the Magnus. If you can lasso the Magnus and uh, force him out of position, of course you're going to, with any kind of damage, you'll put his blink dagger on cooldown. That makes, all of a sudden, that RP combo so much Ten less threatening. Mm-hmm. 
I think Puck was a good band though. Puck and pretty much serves Five the same pa- really. purpose as Bat Rider, like a very annoying hero to initiate, a very good counter initiator, and just a difficult hero so to kill funny. in general. Ooh, Vengeful Spirit. I like this from Fnatic. Going all out with an early game. I was like, eh, they might not have that much early game because like last game they ran Lich plus a passive support. This game I was like, eh, if they pick up pick a passive support, Kunka really needs like levels of excess to initiate Magnus, like really kind of needs a blink too. So with Fly to set things up, I think is a totally different story. And it's a very, very good pick for his bat rider. Mm-hmm. If you cast it appropriately, you can break the lasso and just a good counter initiate in general, being able to save your important teammate. For example, Magnus. I, I really like that pick as well. I'm a little sad face they didn't do the ancient apparition, though. I think landing the AA alt in the gate, uh, Chin's hand of God and mech healing against this lineup would have been just so sick. Just catch him at an RP, and oh. then he won't have any heal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that just oh, would have been so sick. But. Uh, picking up the Venge, as you said, that's a really nice counter pick and uh, answer to bat a rebuttal pick, I guess is probably the way to put it, um, to the bat rider, uh, being able to, as you said, use swap to disjoint the uh, the lasso initiation. Very, very nice pick there. And, you know, Venge has her uses nonetheless, you know, even aside from that. Her Vengeance are going to help Kunk out as you come down the stretch. It is percentage-based, so it will take a while for that to really be Prepare felt. But the armor reduction lets you take a little bit of a quicker Roshan and... Just it's a, really nice with the Kunku, like Kunku cleave though. Yeah, exactly. So the they power that bad boy up. Mm-hmm. I I do I do like this. The uh, fanatic just much a much better draft. I think we're both kind of on the same page there. Everyone getting ready to head out to lanes. I'm gonna run through the lineups real quick this time. Fly will be handling our vengeful spirit. We're gonna have Lich played by No Tail heading up to that top lane. At least for the moment. Era gonna be farming up our admirable admiral. Trixie will be playing on the Bounty Hunter. Very important hero to watch throughout the entire game. He's going to want, I mean, especially against a chin lineup again, he has to fight. He has to find his picks when he can. Uh, early five man can really be the bane of a uh, Bounty Hunter because he just can't contribute as much as he would like in those kind of contexts. Hani going to be taking our Magnificent Magnus Rizzo down mid lane. On the other side of the river, we got Puppy back on Chen for the second game in a row. Certainly had a lot of success in game one. Going to want to repeat that here. Gyrocopter going to be Farmed up by Havost. The Bad Rider, no surprise. He's going to be played by Dindy in mid. Nyx Assassin played by Kuro. And Kuro's got that sick, sick uh, Nyx Assassin dig on his back that I am. I, I just I get moist over. I really want one of those. And Clockwork, going to be handled by Funic. Funic had a great game in game one against the Clockwork. This time he's going to be handling the Rattle Trap himself. Good is not pimped out though. Where's the shadow blade? Where's all those items? I, I remember seeing one of the, I believe, LGD China players yeah. with like an absolutely pimped out Kunka. He had oh. pipe. He had everything. Oh, dude, he looked like uh, he he looked like M Bison, <laughs> or uh, or not M Bison. Uh, what's his name? Uh, and then uh, from Street Fighter. I I I said it last time. Hell, I don't know. I um, forget too. But yeah. it was a good comparison. That's all I remember. <laughs> exactly. And the shadow blade. You can actually buy that set in the shop. I I, I checked that out afterwards. You just can't get the Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade is very, very sick. But lanes take shape. And taking a look here, I mean, who do you give the laning advantage to? Well, Hani already up to four stacks on uh, Sticky Napalm. Got to be careful against the bat. Yeah, I mean, Dendi should, like, out-CS him in the middle. But as long as Mag doesn't die, that's okay for him. Uh, top lane, Funic versus No-Tail. No-Tail should be doing perfectly okay on that. And Trixie just being very annoying. They have a dust already, though. But, um, I mean... Kuroki with level one and pale, he's not very strong. I don't think I definitely don't think they can kill Trixie. Puppy making his way over to bottom lane now. Havos currently taking what farm he can get. He's sitting at two CS. Has to play very careful here and knows it. But now with his supporting cast making their way back in the lane, he should feel quite a bit more confident. Funic gonna do just fine against No Tail, but No Tail will do just fine against Funic. Not gonna be a slow six for Lich this time. And uh, what really interests me is how quick... I want, I want to know what build Havost is going to use on this gyro and how quickly he's going to want to get active. Is this going to be a oh, hard drop the sentry on Trixie. Yep. Can they catch him? Nope. Impale not there. He makes it out of range and uh, just taking the camp away, at least for now. Wow, that's so annoying. That's taking a page from Navi's play. We'll just pick Bounty Hunter and just soak up all of Chen's experience. And all three <laughs> of those are suffering. So, uh, sitting around level one half now. Bat doing very well in mid 10 and 0 against a 5 and 1 for Max. That's about expected, I'd say. Dendi looking for the 2. Ooh, he he just got his bottle. Caught out. He got hit with the magic missile and the tour. That's going to be first blood. Oh, he salved through one auto attack. That's going to be enough. Salved in between auto attacks. Chen comes out. Uh, unfortunately, just level one still yet. The Seder throws out. The orb, but not enough damage. Havost, ooh, very, so close. very ring quick protection. fingers. Yeah, ring of protection without a doubt. 
made the difference there. He decided to try to engage and pop his rocket barrage. It just didn't get the damage he really wanted out of it because creeps were there to split it and then caught with a nice magic missile from fly and followed up with the torrent. But no first blood yet. Yeah, now he's just kind of a little bit behind in the lane. They will use the Seder Tormentor to tra uh, trail him just so he gets that a extra HP regen. He needs to be top in this lane so he just doesn't die to a Venge plus Kunko combo. And Trixie's still hounding Puppy. And he has a Stalish Shield, so he can definitely take this man mode fight. There is a Frost Armor up, so maybe not anymore. And very interesting lanes. Taking a look at No Tail up here. He's sitting at level 4 already. His farm not phenomenal, sitting at just 7 CS while uh, Funic is doing quite well sitting at 12, and that's going to be the, the challenge. It's a one full level advantage, though. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's kind of what you expect whenever you have a Lich. The uh, problem is, though, I mean, a, a Lich that gets active early can make a difference, but not nearly as big of a difference as a Clockwork can get active early. So they're holding Clockwork down, but uh, the value of No-Tail is yet to be seen. He's going to have to come into some very nice situations, and hopefully Fnatic will be able to get a, a much higher value out of that Lich pick this time around. We still see level one bounty hunter and level one, uh, <laughs> level one shed. And it looks like he's going to the opposite side of the map. Oh, no, Trixie just thinks twice about it. <laughs> Puppy has had enough, though. Yeah, so like you said, sitting at 72 XP right now. Miserable at four minutes in. And uh, this is uh, Havost catching up fairly well. Sitting at 11 CS, Kuroki. Obviously, just soaking experience. Kuroki's actually level three now and level four gyro copter. Compare that to Era, who's at level three, and Fly, who's at level three. They're going to be quite happy, I think, with the way this bottom lane has worked out, all things considered. Yeah, it's not so bad. The one problem is he could still die at like any time. If Kuroki leaves the lane, then he just gets initiated on. Kuroki may actually be looking for initiation on Fly. Uh, poking his nose around. Has two points into Impale. And a lot of movement taking place now. Puppy finally getting some XP as he's using the tornado to uh, to uh, melt down some camps. Dindy, we could see, was under the wild tree. <laughs> Trixie being so annoying actually has rotated across the map, and Puppy not even going to be able to enjoy. Puppy's already level three, though. Yeah. He's still got a decent amount. <laughs> it's just, still just hilarious just seeing Trixie trail him across the whole map just to be annoying. Havos, actually, yeah, he's very, very low. All the heroes on the bottom are very low. Yep, a lot of uh, they need back some and salve damage. action going on. Yep, Havos actually just bought a casual salve, because that's what you do. Take a look at mid. Haven't talked a whole lot about it. Hani with that shockwave just hits level 6. Dindy is not level 6 quite yet. Uh, doesn't have the mana for RP, does have Trixie. And Puppy is outplaying Trixie. You know, look at Trixie. He's like on the opposite side of the map looking for Chen, but he's like, huh, he's not here. I don't know. But yep. they have the wards also, so they can see his rotation. Yep. And take a look at the early levels. We can see Lich and Mag are atop. Lich sitting at seven, so No Tail doing quite well in this one on one lane, as one would expect him to do because of sacrifice. After that, though, some pretty low levels. As you said, Trixie still just level one. Now, having a bounty hunter level one at uh, six minutes in, this is not exactly what you want against this lineup. You really need your bounty to be contributing early on because they're going to start to five man before too terribly long. Yeah, he just needs to leash experience somewhere. For example, if Hani just wants to gank bottom lane, I think that would be very effective for him. Um, the, yeah, Trixie just needs that lane to sit in soon. And Lich can start taking over, too. They could just honestly switch out top lane and have Lich come down bottom, use Chain Frost for first blood. Here we go. TPN, that will be Era. On top lane. lane. We're going to have Dindy spotted out and Funic. Gonna eat the one shot of Chain Frost, and there's the first blood grabbed by Hani as he skewered inside the cogs. And uh, No Tail actually threw out the ulti just for the one shot of burst, and there wasn't a single bounce, but it was all they really needed to make sure they both stayed alive. And Kuro and Puppy now back in lane, looking to protect him. Trixie still not level two. He has an invis rune, so he's gonna be able to stay pretty safe for a while. Take a look at the CS era, sitting at 22 in comparison to Gyrocopter's 28. So I would say this bottom lane is a pretty damn big win for Navi, holding the bounty down. There's initiation on Hovost. And the Torrent there to follow it up. Can they get him? Rocket Barrage, a few shots. No Tail's there. Will end up being counter-initiated on. There's the Courier coming out. No Tail makes it away, but they end up getting two as Kuro ends up dropping. And Torrent on the mark. Trixie's there. And the, the follow-up with the Magic Missile. Trixie going to benefit so much from this. Went from level one to level three. And four and oh for Fnatic just like that. Great rotation coming out of No Tail. 
Yeah, huge plays from uh, the Venge Kunkka. They're really good at coordinating their uh, spells. Like Torrent, you have to cast it like immediately once the magic missile starts flying out. And they're just very good at that. And I think a big part into uh, beating Navi, or at least having a very good chance for them, is nullifying the effect from Chen in the early game. And they've definitely done that. Seven minutes in, Puppy is level three and a half right now. I think at the same time, he was probably very close to level six, if not already level six. Trixie has caught up in levels with them after that big disparity, and he is hot on his tail. And a back up in the jungle. Trixie keeping an eye on him. Probably going to give him a little bit of harassment. Sentry actually dropped down, and Puppy sees him. Auto attack alerts him to that. Here comes Hani, though, and Puppy in trouble. There's the RP. Wow, he just goes RP off. For that. Wow. He, is, he must be really unconfident about his skewers. Yeah. And there's going to be fun. It coming over. Hits the hook. Hani going to be skewering Funnick back. He's got the cogs, though. In the meantime, I hear Lasso on the tricks. He should be able to clean him up there. In the meantime, Hani going to end up dead as well. So they managed to track down Puppy, but it cost him the mag and the bounty. Don't know that's a trade they would have preferred, but Navi finds their way onto the board. Nonetheless, make it 5-2. to two. Man. Trixie just ra straight up ran back into the sentry ward. Yep. They didn't have the detection for him. If he just stayed where uh, Mag got hookshot, he wouldn't have died. He also could have had like a really big play and like block the block the hookshot. That's that's asking for a lot. And down at bottom, Era continuing to try to farm up. Kuro's there soaking experience. He's at level four and a half. We'll Level 6 is going to be a pretty big deal for Kuro. Um, as of right now, just kind of a babysitter. Hasn't contributed a whole hell of a lot. Uh, as you said, Carapace can kind of make him a counter to some things. But for the most part, it's all going to be about his movement and uh, working with Vendetta. And then he's very close to his blink. He might get initiated on in mid by Hani. Trixie tracking him down. There's the flame break. There's the ulti and the shockwave. So much magic burst damage, and uh, they bring him down again. There's the impale onto Era. Havos is going to pop call down in bottom lane. Stunned out, but Rocket Barrage getting full damage on Era. Kuro doing what he can. There's a rocket flare coming out from Funnick. Funnick there the to follow boat? it up. And Fly going to be the next to drop. Havos walks away. My goodness. Havos walks away with roughly 50 HP. Actually used a single wand charge to get himself a little higher at the end of that battle. But uh, the fact that Havos has been walking between the raindrops, he's 2-1-0 and, oh, and very easily could have been 0-3 oh at this point. Yeah, if he casts boat, he survives there because he has the Kunkka realm on him. I'm surprised he didn't just cast it very early. Trixie getting going on on top. Oh, wow, is that rocket going to kill him? No, actually, well, not Hani going to get lassoed out. Is he going to be able to skewer away? Funnick's right there. This will be the end of Hani. We'll skewer Funnick down, but right now, it, I feel... Fnatic started out this game well, and this feels a lot like game one. I mean, in, in game one, Fnatic was building themselves a lead that just bit by bit. Navi played their way back into it with just thinking a little bit further ahead. Good Hero rotations, good movements. On on bottom. Yep, showing off the Vendetta for the first time. Here we go. And looking for the damage. Staying right on his tail. He knows that Nyx is on him. Up, oh, Impale off the mark. Remember when everyone said that the Impale change wasn't that big of a deal? I thought he was going to try and cast a Torrent there, but a fake cast from Era. Here comes Clockwork with a Invis rune. And stopping right now into the trees. Up oh, the center. They knew it. They might have seen the creep split up. Very possible. And Torrent's going to be off the mark. Trixie's right on his tail, though, as he does make it out of range of the sentry, so unable to get tracked out. Is Bounty even six? Not Bounty's not six, so couldn't attract him anyway. Honey needs to stop dying. He needs to just get his blink dagger so he can initiate. He's like looking around for RPs, but he's just walking around in plain sight. He gets hooked shot or he gets lassoed, or I mean, he even, hasn't even gotten initiated on by Nyx yet. And this is without the uh, Dendi having a blink dagger. He's going to have it like right now, though, killing the centaur. So Dendi's or Honey's in a lot of trouble. Like he is probably going to die if he just doesn't farm up for like the next two or three minutes or have very defensive RPs. He just needs to farm up, play defensively. If they like tower dive, then you just TP in and then skewer RP or just play an RP. But until then, uh, he's a liability. We can see a four man on bottom duo smoke with tricks undercover of shadow walk for fanatic trying to bait any kind of movement out. Havos sniffs it out though, sitting way back under his tower, not willing to take any chance until he has the cavalry arrive. That'll be coming in the form of puppy and Kuro. And Fnatic now going to show themselves. Oh, there's a swap. Can they catch him? They can. And Havos going to eat the Chain Frost and cleaned up. But the cooldown went off. Now the counter initiation. One for one so far. Could be one for two very quick. The Chain Frost still doing good damage. Oh, Trixie still alive. And Hani whiffs on the skewer. Two for two. There's the RP. Locks down Dindy as they burn in the Firefly. 
And Puppy using the tornado as best he can. Dindy and Kuro, who Dindy will end up dropping. So wow, not that was really close. Hero creeps. Very close. And Fnatic takes a fairly decent engagement there. And end up bringing down Havost, Dindy, and Funic, the three most high-value heroes at this stage of the game. So nice exchange. Yeah, very nice exchange between them. The ward really set up the uh, swap from Fly, and now Trixie's almost level six. So these engagements that are like kind of going in Fnatic's favor, but if they keep trading two for two, three for three, or even three for two, then Fnatic Dyer's will probably come out ahead attacked. with the track gold. But they are finally level six on Trixie, just waiting for the Magnus blink, and then they are in fighting shape. We can see, looking at the gold graph, it's been up and down the whole game, essentially even. Less than 500 gold separating the two teams. It was less than 250 for quite some time as well. So, In regards to that, very close. Slight experience lead going the way of Fnatic, though. And I think they're going to be okay with that. I mean, obviously, no tail's a huge part of that, being able to deny creeps via sacrifice so so easily and so frequently. But uh, for the most part, when you they look... They better late game. Yeah. Savos is, like, way under farm. Yep, exactly. And so they're going to be fine with uh, with the gold staying even so long as they're... And especially with Trixie still saying six. He's six now, so he's going to be... Are like they, is he going to be able to kill puppies? Uh, puppies so close to level six, though. Oh, no, he's just jacking his experience. Um, yeah, I wish he'd just call, start calling Havost x Vost. x Vost. x Boost. x Vost. Here's uh, Dindy hooking up with Puppy. Trixie still keeping an eye on him. They just spotted Dindy. He has a dust, so he can't, he can't use track. Yeah. And just keeping an eye on him right now. We'll see if they're going to try to collapse at all. Kuro's actually heading that way now. And Puppy walking right past him. Here in mid, Hani continues to farm up. He's very close to his blink, only about 100 gold away. In the meantime, we have yeah, another... And he may initiate on him. He forgot to pick up the Illusion, illusion. Rune. If he, like, if he picked up the Illusion Rune, Hani would have been in like, very, very dire straits. Poor Hani, having to deal with mud golems. <laughs> We've all been there before, buddy. Oh, yeah. We can see the four-man reforming at bottom for Fnatic. And this tower, let's see if they're going to respond. They may just try to trade. There's Magnus's blink, so his core up just short of 15 minutes. Arcane bottle blink, very nice for Hani. Not at all. No, it really isn't. Um, yeah, he finally has it. Though. This is really big for him. Honey, he's not like the Magnus player like S4 is, so he really he really can't hit good RPs before uh, before Blink Dagger. And we see that with a lot of mags, so like no knock Radiant to Honey or anything, but he's attack. more like the Queen of Pain, that Radiant sort of player. Right. Are fortified. And down at bottom, we're still seeing very slow rotation. Kuro is going to walk his way over. This tower just at 351 Radiant HP. I'm a little surprised they're not attack. pushing us a little harder than they have been. Trying to play carefully, obviously. Yeah. And here we go. Dindy going to lasso out Era, bringing him back. All of Navi's there. There's the impale and the initiation onto Fun. And Cog's going to go down. There's a good swap trying to get Era to safety. Nope, Centaurs are there from Puppy. In the meantime, Funic surviving through the damage. Fly, not so lucky. No tail. Going to be stomped again. Great play. Out of Puppy's chin, and no surprise to see that. Flame Break not going to be able to knock Trixie back. Track a little too effective at allowing you to create space. Huge win going the way of Na'Vi as they take a three for nil. And their tower still standing. It's actually still outside of deny range. Hani and Trixie, the only two up for the moment. They should be able to take a tier one. With these two centaurs being the difference makers right there. Puppy is so damn good on Chen. Gotta ban him. Gotta ban him. Ooh, Magnus, Magnus was late there to that fight. If he's there to counter RP, that initiate, he gets four people right there. They didn't know he had Blink either, so mm -hmm. Honey should have been there if they're going to commit to that push. Also, Eros is not throwing out the boats. So like, just throw it out. It's yep. a minute cooldown, and it, it's 50% damage reduction. Yep. Like you said, 60 seconds on the cooldown. There's no reason not to spam it every time there's a fight. There's not going to belt. There's an RP on the Dindy. Spin on one target. Going to skewer him back. And trying to catch out all the Fnatic call-downs oh, there. Oh, horrendous. As Hani next on the list. And just like that, one ill-advised RP. Trixie being pursued out. There's the dust. He's dusted. And this is going to be a 5 for nil. He's going to track the try to run. It's not going to matter. That is what you call a cataclysmic turnaround. 15 to 9 following that. And that's what... You know, it's one thing, you, when, you, when you draft a mag, you think of good RPs, always wanting to hit the five-man RPs. Sometimes you can have a bad RP that sets up a fight you don't want to take, and that was that RP right there. Just an utter disaster as Na'Vi takes control on the back of that. Look at the gold graph. Going from slightly in favor of Fnatic over the last two and a half minutes 
now down to 7,500 in favor of Navi. Yeah, I, I mean, I like Magnus where he is, though. He's, like, at that sweet spot where if you're not really good with Mag, you can't really play him competitive. And, yeah. like, S4, pretty much the only one that, like, hits is just, like, really awesome with Mag. And some people just aren't Mag players. Like, Xiao Wei's not a Mag player. Honey's not a Mag player. And it's really showing this game. Like, how many heroes has he hit combined with RP? Maybe, like, two with two RPs? Yep. Yep, and, man, we're actually going to see a dust out on the Trixie. Trixie has just... This is what happens when oh, you have... Oh, Kuro on bottom. Yep, Kuro. Oh, there's a stomp to try and help, and the Centaur likely to be cleaned up. So they end up going two for one. Gyro did end up dropping. They get Trixie out of mid. So Fana continuing to add to his kill total. Not a bad exchange. So. That's the problem. I mean, Bounty was so slow to six and so slow to get active on the map that now he's just not feeling like much of an influence whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And still not getting that much mileage out of Magnus. But the game can easily turn around with one big RP, just like um, it turned around with one big lasso on bottom. Fnatic has, like, a much, much bigger wombo combo. The only problem is, like, Navi has much better, like, counter initiation with Nyx, Assassin, with Batrider Ultimate, and Clockwork Ultimate, too. Like, Fnatic is, like, just a little bit slow to the counter initiation. Like, Ghost Ship takes a while to hit. Lich, Chain Frost takes a while to hit, too. Unless the big, bad RP comes from big ol' Honey. It's all on him, man. Pretty much. Uh, Trixie. Trixie's just now level seven and a half. You take a look. Basically, Trixie and Chen are, are the exact same level. So Puppy, as much as he struggled, is uh, counterbalanced by that. But that's a much bigger loss for Fnatic. Um, you just can't. You, you really want level two track. Oh, here's a smoke. This could be the RP that they're looking for. Havos actually does not have BKB either. Uh, the problem is they can't just, like, let their mid tower get beat on because then they're going to know that something's up. But looks like, oh. Kuroki has popped out. <laughs> There's the swap. Swaps him down. And did they gonna catch the lasso? RP only on the one. And this is gonna be bad. Arrow's gonna end up cleaned up. The ship's gonna come in. But Fnatic has to retreat. Oh wow, the boat actually does connect as they as they ran right into it. Dindy still tracking them down. He's tracked and gonna be brought back. There's a buyback coming out from Era. They manage to track down the Venge. No tails next on the list. Will be cleaned up with a flame break. X marks the spot on a puppy. Still no damage. Hani next. To be followed down, Funix right behind him. Oh, what a disaster! Honey, honey, honey. And I, I, I think this makes the point especially poignantly. Um, and wow, they're they might catch Trixie. They will. Homing missiles there. They're gonna burn him down. Funix cogs him in and dying under your own tier three at sub 20 minutes. That's pretty damn discouraging. Nice torrent, but the fourth staff while in the air. That's an animation I've never seen in Dota before. 21 to 12, Navi. Now up to just shy like of 10,000 gold. From calling GG probably. Yeah. Like this is just really brutal. And then this should be uh, Gyrocopter's BKB gold too. And then once uh, once they get Roshan, it's just really hard for Fnatic to take a fight right now. Uh, they also need a pipe, I think, on the side of Navi. Yeah. Um, once they have that, there's like pretty much nothing they can do. Uh, Kunkka doesn't have enough damage right now. Honey just has not been hitting RPs. Let's just chain process nice, but not against a Chen with a mech and eventually a Pi or just a BKB on most two. Um, and just mass four staff to Delta split that. But here they go. Trying to get another kill. Trixie up the hill. Kuroki has a sentry ward and will hit the stun. And we oh, need a blink they waste back. Oh, Trixie going to be lassoed out. Hani gonna miss once again. He has RP up in five seconds. There's the boat. The rum gets them all. Will it be enough? Funnick's gonna be mech through the chain frost. Dindy continuing to burn these heroes down. Hani has RP up if and when he wants to use it. Spins the blink to escape though. Dindy's gonna be stunned with a magic missile, but a boat's there to clean it up with rocket barrage. One auto attack and no tails down. And yep, Funnick finishes out the fight on the back of that. This is gonna be a Roshan for free. And yeah, I, I don't know that this is going to go on much longer following that fight officially in a five digit territory look how close this game was and for how long at 16 minutes it was essentially even now at 21 23 it is 10,000 in favor of navi the experience is actually more lopsided i don't know i mean the the top three net worth all belonging to navi as well this is this is just yeah. this is the hole we knew fanatic could stumble into and we hope they wouldn't but they sure as hell did yeah, it was just one tiny mistake though. It was Era just pushing up a little bit too far without Hani there to back off. That's all it simply was. And then it just started this whole cataclysmic, catastrophic chain of events. Like Hani's like, crap, I need to cast RP. And then they're like, crap, we need to save Era. They blow swap and then it just everything just 
it's so disastrous for them. Very unfortunate for Fnatic because they were just hanging in there. And now with Roshan down, looks like Gold leads about 12,000. Dendi gets a easy, easy kill on Trixie. And they have a gem up on Dendi. They lose like complete map control right now because of that. Their only hope is still big RP from Honey. They actually pushed up this hill uh, with that last fight without RP up. It was like five seconds left. If as soon as they see, uh, as soon as they see him, if he like blinks and then immediately skewers back into there, his team can't just like drag air down the cliff over here. So Honey has to be really quick about the skewers and about the RPs. And that's one thing that we see from S4. He has like almost no hesitation. He knows exactly what to do, when to blink skewer back, when to blink RP skewer, when to just not do anything at all. And he's very good about the decision making process. And he, sometimes you just have to play mag like 50 times in a row in order to um, be a good mag player. Yep. And he's not, not the best mag player either, but it's, it's such a difficult, difficult hero to play. Yep. It's one of those heroes where one decision can not just determine the outcome of a fight, but in many cases can determine the outcome of the game. Um, and we saw that in that big turnaround that happened right here in the jungle. He uh, spent an RP on one hero, decided to take a fight I mean, off he of... He did it again here. Dude. Yeah. Was, he really likes Dendi. Yeah. He wants him close. <laughs> well, the thing is, is you know, you, it's one thing to spin that, but then whenever you, you push them back into the fight, whenever you skewer them back into your team, you basically you're opening the door to be counter-initiated upon because you've spent your one big deterrent immediately on that hero and in both cases they didn't even kill dindy dindy with a blink dagger force staff both up at something silly like 15 minutes his survivability even after an rp skewer is going to be pretty damn high when you factor in firefly and yeah things Not to mention chen heal and chen exactly. Sen back and chen mech exactly so navi doubling up fanatic right now 26 to 13 and Right now, just cutting the map off. I mean, you see, Fnatic really can't split up anymore. They just can't afford to. They can't keep up war control either because of the gem. And they definitely have the fighting power right now with Gyrocopter with Aegis. So if Fnatic, I, I thought it was going to be like five minutes ago they took one bad fight and it's over, but it looks like they're trying. Oh, Havos <laughs> just drops his call down. Havos, he's a man. He, uh, he's then a he gets tracked out. <laughs> He can still initiate really quick. We have, I actually haven't seen a vengeful swap to uh, initiate or to counter initiate. I think if that had happened on bottom two, the game would have been completely different too. So just like, uh, I don't oh, know. Oh, RP. Caught two, Havost and Kuro, and got Havost into the base. That's going to be his Aegis just about for sure. Nope, never mind. Dindy there to the rescue, manages to lasso out Trixie. The Aegis will be popped by the ghost ship, but now Navi trying to follow us up with damage. That's a good chain frost coming out from No Tail. And all oh, fun and four staffed on top of two, got the cogs down, and will be able to clean them up in the shadow of their own tier three. Havos back up, GG's come out. And two games with a combined play time of around 50 minutes. Navi making it look easy. And you know, this is a revenge factor, man. Oh, yeah. And uh, looks like uh, the folks, you, you know, like you said, uh, given the recent results between these two teams, a little bit surprising that the percentages were so in favor of Na'Vi. But uh, a lot of folks who are counting their rares and laughing right now, I'd say. Ban the Chen. Like, yeah. uh, even with uh, Trixie hounding him all game, um, they just can't get Puppy Chen. It's way, way too potent in his hands. And also, just <laughs> don't give Honey Magnus. <laughs> it, was, it was a very good game, though. Like, yeah. the first uh, 15, 20 minutes was just really a lot of action going on. Fnatic Era also still repping that Han icon. Anyways, yeah, still <laughs> an exciting series. Fnatic uh, gives Navi and Alliance a very good run for their money. Fnatic being able to take down Alliance. So I'm glad that we have uh, just more powerhouses in the Western scene aside from, oh, always Navi and Alliance. Now Fnatic gives them, uh, makes very good makes for very good games. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that's something that's worth putting across is Fnatic obviously on the bad end of, an, of a pretty quick 0-2. Um, but, but we saw them in action against Alliance yesterday. Push Alliance to the limit to a, a three-game series and two separate three-game series. Uh, Fnatic is going to remain a favorite to finish well in this Western division, even, even though they now have lost to both Alliance and Na'Vi. And uh, Alliance and Na'Vi both now unbeaten and only looking to face off with each other. And I, you know, that was kind of the big question mark. That was kind of the storyline involving Fnatic was, could they sneak a win? I mean, and when I say sneak a win, it's not like it'd be a huge surprise. They're an excellent team. But Na'Vi and Alliance are favored against pretty much everyone except each other. And when it's against each other, it's usually a toss-up depending on how the teams are playing at that given moment. But now that both of them have beaten Fnatic, they uh, obviously will be playing each other coming up towards the end of our season next week. 
And if they're both able to remain unbeaten, that match could end up being the deciding match to see who direct qualifies for our grand finals in Las Vegas coming up in January. Hope to see you guys there, by the way. A lot of people still wondering about that. It will be taking place at uh, CES uh, January 7th through 10th in Las Vegas. We'll be in Caesars Palace. So if you happen to be in the neighborhood or want to be in the neighborhood, book a ticket and come out and say hello. It's free and open to everyone. There's not a ticket cost associated with it at all. Of course, first come, first serve. So if we have a billion people show up, only the first uh, couple hundred or thousand or however many uh, the uh, area will accommodate will be uh, seated first. But hope to see everyone there. And, of course, myself, Merlini, uh, our production, our producer, Conrad, will all be there. Uh, certainly four teams. We're the best teams on the planet, two from the east, two from the west. will be joining us there as well. 25 minutes, 13 seconds, the official game time, 14 to 30. The final kill score, Navi blanks Fnatic and, in key and remains perfect 2-0. Fnatic now dropping two of their last three. They're sitting at 1-2 and two in the standings, but again, most likely to be favored in almost in, in pretty much every other match they have to finish out their D2. I'm your host here in AC Chambers. The voice on the other end of the mic, that's Ben Merlini Wu, dropping all the insight and analysis. We're going to be prepping to head towards our second series. I'm going to check and see uh, what time we got. got, to, got to, we're going to have some downtime. Yep, about an hour and 20 minutes, so 80 minutes from now, give or take. Uh, we'll be bringing you our second series, and I uh, hope you guys will tune into one of the other Myriad tournaments going on. I don't know, is Dream League, Dream League going on today and uh, Dota 2 Champions? Yep, there you go. Dream League starting shortly, so uh, during the downtime, if you want to check that out, uh, please do. Love our, our good friends at Dream League. and Draskal, of course, a good friend of mine. I've been passing with him for a long time, but again, my co-caster for the D2L, Merlini. And uh, Merlini, drop the deets. Let them know, man. Where can they find out more about you? Sure. You can follow me on Twitter at Merlini Dota, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, all the same, slash Merlini Dota. Thanks, AC, for another excellent cast. Absolutely, brother. And uh, like, you, like I said, we've got a, a lot of Dota. We've got two more uh, to go. Team Liquid versus Alliance uh, coming up. And I uh, haven't seen, uh, I have personally haven't had a chance to cast the new look Team Liquid. Um, and looking forward to that. And that'll be followed by Evil Geniuses versus Alliance. And I guess you could call it an in-house rivalry if you want to if you want to do that. But again, you can follow us both on Twitter. Boom. I'm at AC. He's uh, Merlini Dota. Hope you'll follow us there. Check out the D2L as well. D2L.gg is the website. Split into two divisions, the East and the West. You can find our full standings, up-to-date schedules, write-ups, VODs. Yeah, if you haven't caught, uh, caught all the action, make sure you head there to check out the VODs. Great links with all of your draft information. It's, it's really, really slick. Really love the website this season. And uh, other than that, have fun. Go watch Dream League. Go watch uh, whatever else happens to be on. But be back here in about an hour and 15 minutes now uh, for our second series, Team Liquid taking on Alliance. Until then, enjoy the break and enjoy some Dota. <laughs>